Let's do some news. Today's date, May 10th, 2019. My name is Mike B. I will be your host today, along with my friends, Uncle Chet, over here. They are also going to be joining me, fact checking in real time, making sure that we that we say we say straight, and make sure we're getting our news just just right, not fibbing, no fibbing, no fibbing, nothing. <sighs> so today, this week, really started out interesting, and I thought if the week goes on like this, we're gonna have to have like like a trilogy of news, <sighs> like a box set of news episodes. But thankfully. But thankfully, shit kind of calmed down after after fucking Tuesday, uh, and just kind of cruise. We just got we got little bits, little like there's little like fruity pebbles of just little news pieces, kind of sprinkled uh, throughout the rest of the week. But to go back to probably what was it? Uh, Monday. The last thing we talked about last week uh, was that everything was happening next week. Well, this is now next week, and so. We have some updates for you on certain things that happened on Monday. Starting Monday. Yes, starting on Monday. First is the Riot Games staff walkout that occurred. Uh, a lot of you folks are, uh, uh, well, probably should be aware that there was uh, a walkout at Riot, uh, obviously seven employees, that uh, were protesting the uh, the forced arbitration clause that's in their employee contracts uh, that's actually in a lot of employee contracts across the board, but a lot of major companies have already gone gone ahead and uh, uh, said they had removed forced arbitration. And it basically, with, with arbitration, it basically prevents people from going and taking up a, a lawsuit against the company without first going through uh, their internal, uh, well, I guess first settling things with the company internally. And that can make things very difficult for somebody who is uh, perhaps sexually harassed or uh, or any kind of discrimination or whatever, because it's like, okay, if you're discriminated by somebody who's perhaps in management, then it's like, oh, well, you know, you have to talk with management before you actually go talk to your lawyer. So, right, kind of makes things a little bit difficult to actually ever get anything resolved which is one of the reasons why people don't necessarily like forced arbitration. And so this walkout occurred on Monday, uh, as predicted, as planned, as scheduled. Uh, and you can see over here, I actually uh, dug up a picture here. It's probably the best picture I could find to really see the crowd. A lot of, there's a lot of pictures floating around that only show like one or two people standing. <sighs> like one or two people standing there with the signs and I was just like, all right, this is not, this does not look good. Like just these pictures alone, it's just like, this does not look good. Uh, so this is a pretty good picture of the crowd here. You can kind of see a little bit of everybody. They had a, a really, really dope mural on the wall here um, that they, um, uh, that's a, that's, that's a, that's an awesome pink folding chair. I don't know they made those. Look at that right there. I gave me one of them. Um, but anyways, uh, basically people got up and they, they uh, shared their stories about what the, one of the reasons, some of the reasons why they're out there uh, protesting and whatnot. Um, but I have to be, I have to be, uh, because, because I try to be as unbiased as possible. Uh, I'm glad that they walked out because remember we talked last week about how some people will just basically sit there and just be like, oh yeah, we should totally do this thing. And they fucking never do. And then they forget all about it. And the next time that thing comes up, they're like, we should totally do something about this. And they never do it again. Right. And so I was really kind of real. I was like rooting for, it. I was like, please, God, please, please tell me there's a lot of people that's going to walk out. And, uh, around a hundred to 150 people actually ended up doing the walkouts. Um, but I have to tell you that, uh, I, I did find out that it is, it was a, it was scheduled. All right. It was a scheduled and approved by management. Uh, it took place over lunch. They basically gave them an extended lunch period, which, you know, like thinking about it from that perspective, it's like, okay, well, it sounds like it really didn't have much of an impact if it was all fucking planned and approved by management. Uh, then, uh, it kind of, it doesn't really feel like it really would have had much of an impact, but, but I will say that, uh, even if it was approved by management, it was an extended lunch break and all that stuff, which is all true. Um, it still shows that people are willing to do something and, and, uh, the, um, yeah, they scheduled the walkout with management. Yep. Yep. I know. I know. I know. I know. Trust me. I know. I know. Uh, but the, there's, they still, they still, uh, left. They still generated the headlines. Okay. Um, and that's really, really, that's like the most they could possibly hope for is that they walked out and they got some headlines because if they didn't get any headlines, then Probably nothing would happen, right? Or at least nothing, not say nothing would happen, but just maybe the speed at which things could potentially change uh, would probably take a little bit longer. Um, and so, yes, yeah, it was, it was uh, approved by management. It was, uh, uh, 
these folks were, I guess, out on their, they got an extended lunch break, like two hours, something like that, to go and uh, do this. Um, it's tough when you think about it from that perspective, but I'm glad that they still ended up going out there and doing it, because at least for those who are unaware that um, management uh, actually approved the, <laughs> the protest, um, they hopefully could take a little bit of inspiration from this so whenever they're faced with issues like this they said well you know what the riot folks walked out we could do it too and maybe it'll have more of an impact and also the fact that it happened once means that if it does happen again it could potentially be bigger um obviously these are changes changes that we want to make to happen right we don't want we don't want people to go to work and feel like they're being discriminated against based off their sex gender religious preference or on who they voted for like basically we don't want people to be to we want people to be comfortable at work and so uh if these things need to happen in the future at a, on a larger scale or, or whatever then um then then great until change happens so uh so we'll see but hopefully the next one is not approved and it's just a straight up walkout but we'll have to wait and see um if man still does a budge by the 16th they plan to take further action on that date yeah so there you go um again i only expect it to get only expect the crowd to get bigger and the bigger the crowd the less i mean it's not like right is right is not sitting there like well we could suffer the blow from this like whatever right they they don't want this kind of attention on them like there, there's no way that riots like, so what? They fucking walked out. No, they know, they know that this is a bad look. The last thing you want after the, after the previous articles about sexism and riot, like big, huge articles, uh, about sexism, uh, sexism and, and harassment and riots. They don't want this, this stigma to be stuck with them. They don't want the riot to be synonymous with, uh, hostile work environments. So this is just another thing that they have to basically, you know, they, that is basically added to the, added to the, uh, 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 added to the fire so it's more fuel to the fire uh and so they need to they need to do something quick because again pretty soon it's gonna be like oh right oh yeah the sexual harassment plays that's right oh they make games too oh shit okay um that's right city portland didn't protest with them <laughs> oh god is that the way it is uh you see I, hopefully there doesn't have to be another one so we'll have to wait till next week yeah yeah well we'll see we'll we'll see but this this part was what we were really looking for right we we wanted to make sure that they there was actually a walkout with at least a, some significant group of people um and and it happened so so yay baby steps i guess um there is something to note though uh a lot of these things can sometimes be fueled and i don't know about this particular instance right uh, but a lot of protests, a lot of times, a lot of times protests are fueled by um, a lot of a lot of times protests that can eventually lead to the unionization of employees are sometimes fueled and paid for by uh, unions because the unions stand to benefit by getting more employees to sign up because they they take the union fees and everything right so they stand to benefit uh, from from protests happening from union unions forming and everything. Uh, it actually happens pretty regularly. If you go out, if you go out to like any construction site, sometimes you'll see people across the street, right, wearing like construction jackets and all that stuff and a hard hat, and they're and they have a sign that's like, "Oh, this person, this company is terrible" or whatever, right? A lot of times, they are not construction workers. They're just paid. They're just paid, <laughs> uh, paid protesters that put on the outfit and they go out there and they just represent the uh, the union. That's um. That's supposed to be representing that. Uh, uh, I was trying to represent those those workers. So this is not this is not a uh, this is not a new thing. It's just something that uh, that just has always happened. Uh, but but I, I did hear that you know this is like through the through the grapevine, right? This was not any kind of direct thing that the that union union unioners want this shit to happen, or union organizers want this kind of stuff to happen. So uh, but. I, these are these are like riot employees. I'm sure. I'm sure these are not like fake hired riot employees in there uh, to 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 the bolster the numbers or anything. Uh, Magic knows it's a bad thing. It's just hard not to crack. And since there has been no protests against this uh, against this before, it has just been something they had to not uh, think about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now they have to think about it, don't they? Um, uh, what is this? You can make good money being a fake protester. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'd imagine you have to go through some kind of like basic class. It's like, oh, just in case someone comes up to you and asks you, uh, you know, what a you know, some some construction related question. I can't even think of like a fake construction related question because I know absolutely nothing about construction. <laughs> I watch so much homes on homes. You would think I would know something. Jesus Christ. Um, let's see. Didn't Google protest a similar situation a few months ago? I I think it was more than a few months ago that there was if if, if there was protest, but it might have been related to the um, forced arbitration clause, and they have since uh, said that they're going to remove that from their uh um from from their employee contracts and everything now um 
Riot is in a position right now where because they are literally in the middle of a legal battle over this kind of stuff, they can't necessarily just pull the plug and be like, hey, you know what? We're just going to delete, just just do, 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 just delete it right out of your um, your employment clause. They did say that after their uh, after their they've settled that suit that they're going to, um, uh, I guess, revisit it or take it out or something. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But but, you know, I mean, people want the shit to happen now. And if they want the shit to happen now, then they need to get they need to do this. And perhaps if they want to continue doing this, they maybe need to do it a little maybe unannounced to have a little bit more of, a, of an actual impact on their uh, on their employers that they're protesting against. So, I guess the next time we get some more news on people walking out of, out of uh, riot, we'll definitely report on it here. But uh, for now, I think that is pretty much a go. You said May 16th that we're going to get. May 16th is actually what do we get. Uh, I think there's something special has happened that day. Oh, that's right. The, uh, the landscape DLC for House Flipper. That's right. Yeah, basically. Look at that. Look at that. That is a special day. Um, cool. So, I guess we'll check back then. Um, next up. If they walked out of the studio and missed deadlines because of it, we all know the gamers are going to be mad at the people walking out. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think the sensible bunch will be okay with it. But yeah, of course, you're going to have people that are going to be uh, that'll be mad because, you know, people are protesting and and, you know, union unions are bad or whatever the fuck they believe. You know, who knows? But yeah. So next up. Randy. That's right. My boy. fucking Randy. Randy. <sighs> so last week. Last week, we discussed a little bit of uh, Randy issues. We actually had a couple of weeks to talk about Randy issues. And you know, it, it's, it's, it's almost every single Randy Pitchford. Now, Randy Pitchford is the CEO of, uh, of uh, Gearbox Games. Um, you, um, hopefully by now you guys know, like at least by name. At least you know his name. Um, here, Randy Pitchforks. <laughs> that's the first time I've seen that. And I'm really kind of sad that that's the first time I've seen that. Because I'm sure it's been thrown all over the fucking place. Uh, so... Randy, um, last week was super passionate about uh, a couple of things on Twitter and I, we pointed it out and, and a lot of things, a lot of the reasons why we bring up Randy here on, on the show is because, is because he, he can't shut up. Uh, and he did it again. <laughs> he d did it again. Uh, he goes out and the last we just, we talked, it was, uh, Eddings discussing, uh, Eddings is the voice, the voice for, uh, Claptrap, who, who is not he's not reprising his role as claptrap for borderlands 3 and there was some twitter um back and forth about that he was asked he was asked directly are you going to be revising your role as uh as claptrap and he said no because blank 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 right um and he he obviously had a couple of good jabs towards uh towards gearbox and specifically randy now um that's pretty much where we left off last week. We 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 had we we had a contradicting story from Eddings himself when he did an interview, uh, 2018, early 2018, I think, where he said that he did not have did not intend on revising the role, um, revising, on uh, <laughs> on uh, uh, revisiting the role. So this week, what is this on May fourth? So a Saturday actually. Uh, Randy goes on and he uh, responds to somebody else's tweet and he says. Um, there was no force. Let me go back a little bit here. Uh, and to my unionization points earlier, uh, union would not allow an employee to force an employee to perform a task outside of their title unless they were provided pay for the new work. The union I work for with has that demand uh, built into the contract. And this is this is one of those things we've all heard this before. It's like it's not, it's not in my job description. That's basically what he's uh, he's saying. And then Randy chimes in and he says there was no force. He wanted it and reveled in it. The issue today is that Mr. Eddings is bitter and disgruntled about having been terminated. He was offered two times pay scale and he refused. I don't want him to do it unless he wants to do it as motivation affects performance. So as the CEO of a company, you kind of have to like always err on the side of being a bigger person, right? You can't, you kind of have to, you can't, you can't trump this. Okay. You kind of have to like, be the bigger person and just, you know, what you know what? Just let, let that person just get his retweets and his likes and just fuck it. The, the thing will just, will just, will just blow over whatever. Right. Um, but no, Randy. Oh boy. Oh no, no. Randy. He gets right in there. He gets his hands dirty. He gets right in there. Uh, and he says shit like Mr. Eddings is bitter and disgruntled. Wow, man. Just 
what maybe that kind of shit flies internally and let's think about that for a second if this is the kind of shit that randy's saying publicly on twitter about previous employees what the fuck is he saying internally about his current employees i haven't looked at glass door yet but hot damn i just really want to <laughs> so it's it's it just seems like yeah yes twitter is not internet so i know i know you mean this is just go out to just employees the no. oh man uh it just it just it just looks terrible you have to be the bigger person have to be a bigger person um and be able to walk away from these things and just let let just like you know okay whatever let eddings you know let him bitch about things whatever well eddings eddings wasn't done he saw that and he was about to he wasn't about to let randy have the last word on this and so he wrote a nice little thread and i'm gonna go ahead and read some of this as quickly as i possibly can i was fine moving on after gearbox but when my former boss starts mouthing off about various aspects of my employ employment including Highly, how highly compensated I was and how generous he is, I feel obligated to correct the record. Uh, I had a lot of mixed feelings when asked to reprise the role of Claptrap late last year and eventually realized I was willing to put differences aside and do something cool for Bethesda Borderlands fans with uh, my friends at Gearbox. Bethesda, that's another story we'll talk about later, sorry. Uh, I ultimately offered to do it for free in exchange for past royalties owed, plus an apology for something I've never spoken about publicly until now, Randy physically assaulted me in the lobby of the Marriott Marquis at GDC 2017. <sighs> Personally, I think Randy's been on tilt the last few years. He's not the victim he portrays himself to be. I even blocked him a couple years ago for stalking me on social media. Enough is enough. It's nice not feeling the need to spot any sleight of hand these days or wonder if the card was chosen or forced. I'm happy to be free from the half-truths and the full-on deceptions and thankful to no longer hear people referred to as muggles like a con man refers to a mark. As an aside, seems a bit conspicuous that he chimed in on my salary but didn't mention anything about the $12 million of revenue he siphoned away from the employee royalty 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 pool. FYI, Gearbox employees are asked to take uh, lower salaries with the promise of royalty shares. You should know that this is an outstanding uh, uh, lawsuit right now against Randy. So allegedly he did these things okay um so all these things it's all allegedly all right he allegedly assaulted me he allegedly did this he let we could we can we can tell you for certain that randy definitely is a dickhead on social media we can definitely confirm that much but everything else is pretty allegedly. Uh, 2K says they won't give a statement regarding an ongoing lawsuit, but if an allegation is false, then it seems uh, it sure seems a lot easier to just deny it since that's the only reason they're mentioned. The whole thing stinks. So, ooh, ooh, this is strong words, especially this part about, you know, physically assaulted by, uh, by Randy in the lobby of the Marriott Marquis. You know what's funny when he said this? I was like, holy shit, there's a very, there's a very strong chance that I was there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, because GDC, I was at GDC 2017, 2017 I'm fairly certain I was, um, and there's only a couple places you could really hang out at GDC, it's pretty much the Marriott and the W, that's it, like, nobody hangs out anywhere else, the lobbies are packed, and so, usually I end up, when I go, I end up bouncing between the, the W and the Marriott, because it's like, they're, they're, they're walking distance, um, and so, yeah, it's like, I know exactly where he's talking about. Uh, it's so uh, people get assaulted there all the time. I don't understand what the big deal is. No, I'm kidding. But uh, this is a pretty serious shit, um, like pretty serious stuff uh, in terms of like an actual like an actual allegation. And, and so so much so like this is this should be one of those things where it's like, OK, at this point, at this point, Randy should just so much just 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 take away the keys, just take away the keys for his social media accounts. And just be like, Randy, please, please, shut the fuck up. <laughs> please, please just stop. Um, and it turns out he did. It turns out he actually did. If we go and take a look now, keep in mind, Randy is not necessarily totally like that regularly active, uh, just tweeting, like just, you know, public tweeting or whatever, but he's very active when he responds to things. So I'm going to scroll down here a little bit um, and you could see. Like, you know, May 3rd, 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 May 2nd. Oh, there we go. Okay. I thought I was gonna be here all day. Uh, so he really is active. This is not just, oh, you know, sometimes he takes, takes, you know, a little gap in between, you know, being active on social media. He's pretty fucking active. Uh, and then we scroll up to recently. This is most recent here. Uh, he tweeted out, this is a public tweet, not a reply. Public tweet, not a reply. May 7th. That's public tweet, not a reply. Public tweet, not a reply. May 6th. May 6th. 
Oh, that's a public tweet, not a reply. You, you could see it definitely has slowed down. So, so somebody, hopefully Randy, hopefully Randy had this revelation. He's like, wow, you know what? Every time I say something on social media, people get super mad at me. I say something on social media, people get super mad. I have a super important product that I'm pushing very soon. I really want to make the most money I could possibly make off this product. But every time I open my mouth, more and more people say they're not going to buy this product. Maybe I should st stop talking. <laughs> like, hopefully he's the one that made those connections. Uh, but I'm sure he probably had some help from uh, everybody in the world who saw these tweets. It, it's, it's just, it's just, you have to be the bigger person. Randy, you have to be the bigger person, dude. You got it. You got to, you got to, you have to, you have to. I really, I hope to God, this is not the way shit it's run internally at Gearbox, but I'm pretty sure if it is, if it is, then I'm sure we'll hear about it sometime soon. Um, uh, because stuff like this, stuff like this doesn't stay under wraps for very long. And a lot of us, I've, I mean, now that when you, when you, when you, it's like one of those things when you find out that somebody is like, I don't know, an abuser or something like that, or like an alcoholic, right? Uh, and then, and then it's like, holy shit, like that person's like, not, it went, went into rehab. It's like, oh my God. And then you start remembering all those times where it's like, okay, yeah, oh, wow, yeah. Now, now thinking back, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I'm thinking back all these times this guy did this, and it's like, yeah, totally, it's totally signs of, of somebody suffering from alcoholism. Uh, and it's something like this. It's like, yeah, what's it going to take? Eventually, we're going to find out, oh, wow, Randy, Randy is like, um, you know, assault people or something. I have no, I have no idea, right? I have no idea. Like something terrible that Randy does. And it's just like, oh, wow. Now we could see all these instances that happened in the past where it's like, okay, well now we could see that. Well, hopefully he doesn't end up going, get into that point, but Jesus Christ. Um, sometimes less is more. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. JT. Um, no one makes that connection without being forced to. I know his wife is like, dear. Yes. Ah, and Trump can have that kind of connections. I know it's funny. You know what? Like, I mean, not trying to dive into politics or anything, but let's just like looking at just uh, 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 Trump's, um, you know, his tweeting habits, you know, very aggressive, very things that you would typically say. I mean, just like I just said, you got to be the bigger man sometimes and just suck it up. Right. But that's not Trump's. That's not how Trump operates. Like if somebody says something about him, he says something on social media, uh, put him on blast. And so it's like one of those things. It's like, it's like, this is Randy's trying to run his Twitter account, basically the same way that Trump runs his. And the problem is that Trump is in the highest office in the U S and Randy is not <laughs> Randy is still, uh, is still beholden to the consumers. Whereas Trump is beholden to no one. So you see, there's, there's, there's a disconnect here. You can't, you can't have it. You can't have everything. You can't do it both ways. Um, ah, verbal diarrhea usually requires help to care. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make sure everyone knows they're wrong. That's kind of the, that's kind of what it feels like. I mean, let's, let's, let me just looking at some of these, some of these tweets here. Um, well, actually, let's look at some of these tweets, because what I was going to say is that I'm not I don't want to paint a picture that Randy, that everything that falls out of flies out of Randy's mouth is negative or uh, uh, or it can be construed as some kind of harassment or bullying or whatever. Uh, I, I want to say that, you know, that maybe a lot of his um, a lot of his tweets are just conversation. So out of curiosity, now that I have this up without scrolling anywhere, I actually kind of want to read some of these. Uh, he says, that is true for some users, but my analysis of the data uh, suggests the vast majority of players would benefit from expansion to existing characters ahead of creation of new characters. Now, now, now's not the time for this, though. We have a game to finish. Hey, look at that. We got, we got a game to finish. It's, I don't read. Okay, he doesn't read game, right? Okay, that's cool. It's not a censorship thing. We thought it was fun for those little guys to be the scrappy ones. They make little turrets and shit and dive into scrap piles. We started calling them tinkerers, and that got shortened. It's also something that unique to our game now, which is nice. It's positive. See, so it's not, it's not like everything out of his mouth is bad. He just needs to not say shit that's bad because it's going to blow up because all eyes are on him right now. I mean, he's not saying anything. So I guess, I guess he took the right, he took the right path. He took the right, yeah, he took the right pill. Um, uh, oh yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. This is, this, this summarizes it perfectly. Thank you so much, Ira. That's pretty much it. Are you coming to bed? I can't. This is important. What? Someone is wrong on the internet. And there you go. So that is a very, very accurate right there. Oh man. Is that it for my, uh, Randy. news? I think so. Yeah. Wow. That's it. Whoa. Jesus. Well, he also stopped talking. So I guess we could kind of move on from there. Um, man, man, when Randy is saying shit that isn't ostensibly bad, it's probably a lie. <laughs> 
trying trying to remain neutral here, neutral here, guys. We're just we're just reporting on the facts and the shit that we actually see. <laughs> so so there, good. I'm glad that I was actually worried though that that it was gonna be like a bunch of just negative Nancy shit, and I was gonna be like, oh well, fuck. I guess maybe he is an asshole, but but nope. See, he's well rounded. <laughs> Maybe Epic will buy 2K games and bring us all together. There you go. Oh my god. You imagine that? Just the just whoosh. I mean they already work so closely together. There we go. Um being wrong shouldn't be a matter of opinion, but fact. Oh JT, I wish. I wish that's the way it was. I fucking wish that's the way it was. But it's not. Um <clears throat> Moving on. Moving on. We're not talking about Pro Jared today, alright? Get out of my face. We're not talking about that shit. That's none of my business. That's none of your business. That's no one's business. All right. <laughs> but the pictures are hilarious, though. All right. So uh, next up, next up, we have Bethesda. Bethesda uh, recently pulled. Uh, <laughs> Because it's a mental picture now. I just can't shake it. Just get out. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh -huh. mm. <sighs> All right. Bethesda's latest Elder Scrolls adventure taken down amid cries of plagiarism. Their elsewhere, elsewhere RPG is extremely similar to a Dungeons and Dragons adventure campaign published by Wizards of the Coast in 2016. Oh man, I didn't think, I didn't think that this was going to be as blatant as it is, but it do. Did I do that right? No. But you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't think it was going to be quite as fucking close. And so here's what I did. So first off, yeah, they have a, uh, they have a, uh, uh, a board game that they're, they're putting out and there's a, there's an actual, uh, uh, a PC version of, I guess, coming out soon or something. But, um, the, they basically have a bunch of literature and a bunch of stories related to, you know, the game or the lore and all that stuff. And some people found out that it it's pretty, pretty close to, uh, to this thing published by Wizards of the Coast, this adventure published by them back in 2016. And I decided to scroll down and read the comparison here. And so this is the introduction to the Black Road. And it says, there's nothing like the desert to make people feel small and insignificant. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to go to the next one. This one's from elsewhere here. Uh, it says, nothing beats the desert to make people feel small and unimportant. <laughs> unimportant. So I had to read the other one again. There's nothing like the desert. There's nothing beats the desert to make people feel small, to make people feel small and insignificant and unimportant. I mean, it's not plagiarism is not perfectly like the same, right? There's different. It's different. In every direction, huge dunes roll across the landscape and an even bigger sky looms above. In every direction, enormous dunes roll across the landscape and an even larger empty air skies above it. <laughs> this is sick because it's just like, it's like, uh, <laughs> this is pretty fucking plain, man. This is Mad Libs. This is Mad Libs, the anti-plagiarizing uh, app. <laughs> Let's use words. That means the same thing to replace words. Yeah, exactly. Just change the words a little bit. Oh, damn. I, 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 I did not. I was, I was thinking that, oh, you know what? Maybe it's still, maybe it's kind of close. And it's not. It's like really fucking close. I won't read the rest. You could just go ahead and take my word for it that it's, there's a lot of similarities. The, the similarities don't start, stop there. Uh, but over here also it says, uh, the similarities often extend into gameplay and scenario details as well. Here's a description of a caravan players can, count, can, can encounter in the Black Road. Four wagons, each pulled by two foul-tempered camel, camels, or four carts, each pulled by two horses. One wagon carries the caravan's food. One cart carries all the food. One wagon carries the caravan's water and a shipment of med medicinal herbs. One cart carries all water and medicines. One wagon carries a shipment of weapons. One carries a large load of weapons. I mean, it's pretty much the same fucking thing. It is the same thing. Uh, you know, it's funny. They make, there's services that um, you could like go and plug in a piece of text and <laughs> inspired by <laughs> Uh, and it will, oh, was it, was it, was it Grammarly? Oh, no, no, no. What is it? it there's an actual like anti-plagiarizing or plagiarizing check or something like that. And what you could do is you could, you could plug in a block of text and it'll go and show you where the, uh, where it might show up elsewhere <clears throat> in a book or something like that. And it's just basically a tool that I guess teachers use, or I guess people could use. Yeah. Colleges use them. Um, turn it in. Is that what it is? Yeah. So turn it in. There you go. 
Uh, ask any and all professors. So there you go. It's 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 one of those things that you could you could just use this tool that people know exists and that's used all the time, uh, and it will tell you immediately if there's some kind of plagiarizing going on. Now, that being said, it is entirely possible that that tool does not necessarily work on a you know D and D campaign, adventure campaign that was published in 2016. Maybe, maybe that wasn't cached. Maybe that wasn't part of the record or something. Um, and so maybe, maybe. It's not an excuse to allow it to happen. Well, hey, we couldn't find it using the plagiarizing tool, so, you know? <laughs> so, maybe it's fair game. Um, yeah, teacher, use it on you. There you go. Wait, were you cheating? Jeez. Uh, he forgot to translate from English to German to French to Spanish and back to English. That's how you do it, John. That's that's how you do it right there. <laughs> just, 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 like, fucked up grammar all the way across. Uh, can someone chat give you up to speed? Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> someone chat will get you up to speed. Um... I wrote that damn good. Oh, look at that guy. Get him, Digi. There you go. Um, let it be true that at some point Bethesda goes Hasbro ain't going to do shit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Hasbro ain't going to do shit. Uh, you know, it's funny, though, that uh, I think it was mentioned already earlier. Bethesda Zenimax um, being very uh, uh, litigious people. Um, they really love their lawsuits and they have lots of them. A lot of companies do. But they have some pretty, some pretty uh, public ones, like pretty big ones. Like they re remember the um, the Oculus Rift fiasco with with them, right? It was like Zen it was Zenimax versus Facebook, I think. And Facebook ended up paying like two hundred and fifty million. I think that was them, was it not? Yeah, it's Scrolls. Oh my God, Scrolls. So like these are these are people that like are just like they have a team of lawyers that are just like ready to jump on shit, ready to jump on shit. At all, at, 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 at any moment. And they are now <laughs> on the receiving end of this. <sighs> Pornos do this all the time. What's the big deal? I know. Like, like writing Miss Daisy and Jurassic Pork. I mean, come on. That sounds nothing like the original. <laughs> come on. Jeez. You know what? Those two. Um, what's her name? I can't remember. There was a there was a there was an MTV VJ back in the '90s, and she said she said that she used to be a porn star, and she was in Jurassic Pork and uh, uh, and uh, uh, writing Miss Daisy. Oh, Daisy Fuentes, Daisy Fuentes. And the reason why I remember the reason why I remember it was a joke, by the way, but I didn't know that. OK, I was like 16 years old and I was like, Daisy Fuentes was a porn star. I will never, ever, ever forget the names of these pornos. And I never did. And they don't exist. But I will never forget Jurassic Park and writing Miss Daisy because a fucking Daisy Fuentes just ruined my teenage years. Damn it. Ugh. <sighs> Anyways, so. So that's it. So they ended up uh, pulling it. And while they investigate and <laughs> see. <laughs> Daisy Fuentes was beautiful, man. That was she was like the star. She was she was like like if I had a, if I had a posters on my walls, she would be on all of them. Um, so yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go ahead and investigate this, and they're gonna see uh, what the um, I guess what the uh, 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 what the source of this could potentially be. Always comes back to porn. No, it doesn't. Except when it does, which it doesn't. All right. Um, and so and so yeah. Yeah, that's uh, I guess I guess we'll just wait and see. But pretty much the rest of this is going to be handled prob probably behind closed doors. Uh, I guess I have to go and, and rewrite some of this stuff, like actually from scratch this time and not fuck this up a second time in a row. But how silly. What a silly thing to get busted for. I mean, just to do in general, right? What a silly thing just to do. But then to get busted for it, like you just look dumb. You look so dumb, especially when it's so... <laughs> So I want well, to read some of this again. Hold on a second. What is it? Uh, in various ways, in, in, uh, through various means, it has been arranged that you would meet Azam, the caravaner in the large, the car caravan, car caravaner in the large Kalimshin style tent that passes for a tavern here. I don't know how to pronounce some of these fucking words. All right. Uh, in various ways, it is arranged that a group of adventurers would get acquainted with the caravan leader named Kareem. Uh, the, his big tent is filled with several Khajiit, okay, I think that's pretty much it, yeah, um, which seem unaffected by the heat. They stare at you cautiously. So how does that? The dim interior of the tent is a relief from the bright light and the wind, though it's uh, as hot here as anywhere else. So, oh, sorry, there's the, a pair of tieflings who seem to be unaffected by the heat. Oh my god, it's the same fucking thing. I thought, I was, I was like, oh, it's not really the same. No, I just skipped the, I skipped the sentence. Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, man. <sighs> silly. Silly, silly, silly. All right.
Damn, she's 52. Damn. All right. So uh, next up, the U.S. Uh, a U.S. senator in Missouri uh, has. Uh, uh, I had to think, make sure I got that acronym correctly. It is Missouri MO, right? Yeah. Um, introduces a, a bill to ban loot boxes. And uh, it's because you got to think about the kids. Think about the kids. Think of the kids. This is one we should probably support, by the way. Um, so I'll read the first, the first paragraph over here because I think it's pretty important. Senator Josh Howley. Howley? <laughs> That's like a derogatory way of calling somebody white in, uh, uh, in Hawaii. Uh, Senator Josh Howley today announced a bill that would ban loot boxes and pay to win microtransactions in games played by minors, a broad label that the senator says will include both games designed for kids under 18 and games whose, quote, whose developers knowingly allow minor players to engage in microtransactions. So, this is, this is, um, basically, it excludes M-rated games because there is no reason for us to believe that kids under the age of 18 would ever play an M-rated game. Why would they? There's no way. No parent would buy their, their kid Call of Duty or any of these other massively popular games that have just wallet gouging microtransactions in them. There's no way that parents would buy those things for their kids. Uh, and, well, I mean, I guess, I guess we'll wait and see what happens, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, they did announce the bill. The bill is uh, is the, the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act. And I was a little disappointed in this because I feel like all the big Republican bills always have some crazy acronym that kind of like really sells it, even if it's not necessarily related to it, like the Patriot Act. Uh, but this one is just the PCAGA. And it's just, I was just, 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 yeah. <sighs> so the PCAGA, uh, which will be uh, introduced to the U.S. Senate soon. And they will uh, say, so when a game is designed for kids, game developers shouldn't be allowed to monetize addiction. Yes, yeah, P, 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 Kaga. P, P, Kaga. I know, I know, I know. It just doesn't end. Uh, and when kids play games designed for adults, they should be walled off from compulsive microtransactions. Game developers who knowing, knowingly exploit children should face legal consequences. And I feel like, I feel like we know this. Like, we know, yeah, we know this. This is, we, we, we as adults, don't want to feel like they're taking advantage of us with these microtransactions, right? It does kind of roll off the tongue, doesn't it? But there's an update from the ESA, the Entertainment Software Association. It says uh, that uh, numerous countries, including Ireland, Germany, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom, determined that loot boxes do not constitute gambling. We look forward to sharing with the senator the tools and information the industry already provides that keeps the, the control of in-game spending in parents' hands. Parents already have the ability to limit or prohibit in-game purchases with easy-to-use parental controls. Oh, man. Oh, man. Just, just like, it just, it's, it's so, it's so, uh, uh. They're just throwing shade. Like, they really are. Like, this is some serious shade here. It's just like, oh, oh, we're, we're, we'll go ahead. We'll share the tools with this little senator over here. We'll let them know exactly what these other big countries, big countries, not this little state, are doing. Fuck it, eh? Um, parental controls that no parents know where they are. The kids smart to turn them off. Yeah, I know some of them. Yeah, actually... The uh, 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 iOS devices, whenever you have the, the time limit thing, you can actually just hit a button and it'll just let you um, bypass it, which is super silly. If you don't have a, well, yeah, even, with, even with the code on, even with the damn pin number on. Anyways, it's another story. Um, so yeah, the ESA has chimed in and basically said that, hey, if we give them tools, the parents should be taking care of it. So the ESA has taken the stance that parents should be the ones to regulate their, um, their children's playing habits. And you know what? I agree with that. I agree with that. But at the same time, they make it, they, they compromise game play, uh, and they push them, they push them in, like onto the kids constantly. Like they, they push this thing all the time. So it's not fair to say, oh, well, the parents should be the ones to regulate this. But while, and then on the other hand, they're constantly like waving it in front of the kid's face. And that's the problem is that is that what they're doing is they're basically turning parents into the bad guys by by 
do, going doing this practice and it's not and i get it like it's as a parent it's like yeah you know what? my kid's addicted to minecraft you know totally he fucking loves minecraft and if he had free access to mods which he does but he doesn't know it yet uh then he would be installing mods and playing minecraft all fucking day all day that's all he would do right i mean it's <laughs> all he would do uh it's up to me to cut him off from that right but if 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 this there's no there's no loot boxes in in Minecraft PE by the way so it's not really hard, really hard to make this like this actual comparison here but uh, if if the if if the if loot boxes are constantly being pushed and everything that he does in the game right if that was built into Minecraft then I would be like dude like fucking stop pushing these things or should be some way to like to 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 stop them from showing up at all but they're not gonna put that shit in <sighs> so. Uh, let's go back and see. It's a mistake too. Hold on a second. I know I'm missing some chat here. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Uh, I mean, I wasn't allowed to bitch a moment when I, well, to get what I want. What does whining get you? Nothing was the interaction. <laughs> uh, it's a mistake to turn distaste for loot boxes and microtransactions into a desire for legislation written by old, uh, out of touch politicians. Uh, I agree as well, but the games industry is pushing the envelope of what is good microtransactions and is incapable of regulating itself. Right? I agree with that. Um, don't ban it, just regulate it. Add a gambling tax and see how long this practice lasts. Dude. Fuck. The, the problem is certain countries is deemed that it's not gambling and other ones, I believe, have said that it's gambling. Um, oh, man. It's just been... It's just been, uh, yeah, so it's to say, if it's not gambling, if we're guaranteed to get a reward of equal value, right, exactly, and so, <sighs> man, um, I'm, I'm for light physical discipline, though, in my opinion, if you are the authority figure in your house, your child won't bitch and mode, won't, won't, that's, yeah. <laughs> No, they do. <laughs> they absolutely do. Even if you are the authority figure, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll still bitch and moan, which is fine because then you just tell them it's like, like you just shrug your shrug your arms and be like, oh, well, what can I do, man? But again, if if they're constantly being, uh, if 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 they constantly have these loot boxes or microtransactions like dangled in front of them, then it's that it's fucked up. Declan used to play a game called Tomb of the Mask. It's a um, I don't know how to describe it. Like, imagine, like, Pac-Man, but, like, super fast-paced. Like, imagine, like, Pac-Man and, like, a fast-paced platformer, like, had a baby, right? Um, it's a really fun game, but the problem is that they only give you, like, a couple tickets to actually play, right? And then after you die, they're like, push this button to watch a video, and you could get another, you could get another, uh, another life, and then push this, and you could, you know, for microtransactions, and push this to, to get more lives, and get more skins, and get more whatever. And it's like, and it's like, every fucking aspect of this game is monetized, and... I just want, I, I would, I, if I could just pay one flat rate and just d let them play everything he wants on that game, that'd be awesome. But we know that's not the case with mobile games because everything is, is pushed by microtransactions. This is part of the reason why Apple has their own Apple games thing where they don't have microtransactions. It's just basically actual, actual games full, right out there. You can just play the shit. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough to regulate it when you want your kid to have fun and enjoy something that he really likes, but he can't because every every time he pushes a button, the, he's faced with a microtransaction of some sort. Um, <clears throat> I put a lot into Discord about this. The short of it, this was a uh, this was brought in the gaming industry by their own shitty practices. The gameplay is threatened by uh, their inclusion because the companies are financially incentivized for encouraging people to pay to the system, pay into the system. Cosmetics are thrown in front of people to make you go, "Oh man, I want that. It looks cool." Well. <laughs> okay, good thing you're doing this while Mike is wearing the public shave shirt. What? <sighs> All right, so so uh, uh, to that to that note, era. Hold on a second, I'm losing it here because it's scrolling off screen. You guys are busy. Um, if the parent, wait, if the parent needs to do this. Then why do we have an age and content ratings for video games? <sighs> Thank you, Gari. Wow. Yeah, seriously. That's I mean that's really to summarize. It's like oh well, the parents know all this, all the all the policing. Then surely we don't need to have. Uh, uh, there's rating systems and everything. Yeah, surely we don't. Um, yeah, you can't you can't really have it both ways in that regard. Um, so microtransactions were brought in because despite inflation, video game prices have pretty much remained the same pretty much. Don't go pull me some fucking random example of why of a game that was like 80 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever. Pretty much games on average are, are, are about the same price as they were. 30 years ago. Um, when you go to Toys R Us, you guys remember Toys R Us? Uh, you go to Toys R Us. And you buy a game, you buy a Nintendo game. They used to have little slips. They used to have little slips. They basically had a wall. It was very like haphazardly set up. They had a wall of like box art and they would have um, slips. You would go and you grab a slip and you take it to the front uh, front counter and they would bring you the actual game itself. And it costs like 50 bucks. It costs like 50 bucks. And because, you know, inflation has not, um, 
because inflation has surpassed the price of games by a long shot and games, as somebody's mentioned, is a kind of a teacher or sorry, we're, uh, uh, are cheaper now in some respects. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard for them to, I mean, they, they need to find a way to justify it to, they need to find a way to continue to make more money. They need more people to make games now than they did 30 years ago. They need to hire more folks. Uh, they spent a lot of money on PR, which, you know, we could argue that part, but you cannot, you cannot, um, you can't say that they don't need more people nowadays versus when they made fucking E.T. on the Atari. You can't say that they, they don't because they, they definitely do. They have, they have voice actors. They have uh, you know video editors. They have cut scene directors. They have all kinds of crazy shit um, on top of like sound design and, and actual like, program of the game itself. <laughs> like there's so much shit. There's so much shit. So it just takes... Um, it takes a lot more. And so microtransactions were pretty much birthed because game prices didn't go up. Probably because... Players were not going to play, play, play or pay a hundred dollars for whatever their game is, right? They want they want to pay fifty bucks. It's funny because movie ticket prices have gone up sub substantially over the past you know, thirty years, fifty years, right? But video games are still about the same price. So yeah, they're gonna they're gonna find ways to uh, they're gonna find ways to make more money. And loot boxes is just the thing that they feel like is probably the most profitable right now, right? They'll find something else. There'll be something else that they'll discover later on that they'll be able to exploit to make more money. But the box price is not enough. Remember when, remember when box price and microtransaction shop was like a sin? It was like, oh my God, I bought this game and I have to pay for that. Those microtransactions. I'm not buying that, right? That was like a huge sin, huge, huge, huge sin. And now it's like, it's like every other game does that. <sighs> no, it's not today. <laughs> so many games do that. Seasons. Thank you, Ain't Not Nothing. Yeah. DLC, Season Pass. I mean, absolutely. It's, 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 it's like common practice now. Uh, depends who you ask. Okay, I'll, I'll just ask the facts. <laughs> uh, I don't buy the inflation argument. Yes, games are more expensive right now, but a lot more players are buying games. Markets increase, all while distribution is much cheaper. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll look at I'm not I'm not an economist, right? All I'm saying is that games are the same price now as they were 30 years ago. And games cost a lot more money to make now than they did 30 years ago. Yes, delivery probably has gotten a little bit cheaper, right? Like they probably stand to make more money per sale for sure. Is that enough to off offset the cost of of, uh, 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 of what it takes to make a game now versus 30 years ago. So this is, I mean, this, this is the, this is like now this is the age old argument. We don't know. I mean, like none of you guys really know. We could just go back and forth about our opinions all day, but oh, the issue with that argument though, Mike is this, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Where's my, where's my, where's my boop. <laughs> where's my purge button. <laughs> you were kidding though, right? You were, you were, you were kidding, right? You were, you were in serious, right? Were you era? era? <laughs> All right. Damn, the problem is this. That sounds like some some trolly shit that Ira would say. Ira, you, you could talk. I, I I just enigma. There it is. <laughs> uh, is it only because AAA studios spend that expecting more? Uh, expect to make all the money in the world and tie unrealistic realistic expectations on the returns for that investment. Uh, definitely recommend a uh, YouTube video on anchoring and how it relates to the prices uh, of the markets. Okay. Um, but more people buys games, uh, if the game is good. <laughs> uh. All right. Yeah, delete his essay. <laughs> Just purge that shit right out. Uh, don't worry here. I read everything you read before. We already, we already talked about it. We already talked about it. Um, for the folks at home on YouTube, Ira gets, Ira gets purged pretty regularly now. Like twice. But I'm gonna try to make it a more common thing though. You know, just, 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 yeah. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I would have less issue with loot boxes if they didn't have duplicate I uh, element in them. Well, the duplicates usually like, uh, some kind of currency that they, they convert into right away. You know, like dust, like for example, like Hearthstone with dust, um, or whatever the shards are or whatever you get in, uh, uh, what's it called in, uh, in Apex Legends. Speaking of Apex Legends, we'll talk about that later. All right. Let's <clears throat> see. Uh, no, speaking of Apex Legends. Because, yeah, that is, that is actually the next story. Hey, hey, hey. All right, everyone's going to argue about the, the economy. Uh, the economy of video game prices. Well, good. I'm glad we have all these, all these, uh, these strategists and economists in, uh, in chat. I've already said I'm not, so I'm free. I'm free and clear. 
You guys, however, got to work that shit out. All right. So EA is in advanced negotiations to bring Apex Legends to China and mobile. Now, this isn't like crazy story or anything. This is, this is something that, this is like, duh. Like, duh. Of course. Of course. Of course they're going to bring uh, Apex Legends to, uh, uh, to China. China is a huge market. China is so big that pretty soon their rules will apply to us. Because game developers are going to be like, you know what? We can make $400 billion in China and the $100 million we make in the U.S. with the U.S. version that's not censored and not, you know, whatever, uh, is not really worth our de development time anymore. And so, yeah, that's 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 your future right there, folks. Um, but yes, yeah, so is it right that's a $30 billion video game industry and over 600 million players? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of money. So, yes, of course. Yes, of course you're going to see uh, Apex Legends go over there. Um, mobile VR games, I'm, in I'm inevitable. <laughs> uh, yep, it's true. China is go big. We're getting a second, uh, we're getting a second Warcraft movie. Oh, right, yeah, because China got, uh, China's the one that, that had the most uh, uh, income for uh, for Warcraft, the first one, wasn't it? Uh, we all remember that story a few months ago that you, when you tried that, I'm oh, sorry, I missed this. Uh, da, da, da. Um, they have to change all the females to males and they remove all accents. What the hell? I, well, I know that. I don't know about that. Uh, I, I do this because it's like, I can't, I can't believe that's true. But, but yeah, bones, uh, blood, uh, anything that looks kind of like blood. So remember Mortal Kombat on the SNES? Uh, it had like, it replaced blood with, it made the blood white or gray. So it looked like sweat. Right. And that was the way that that's how they were able to get Mortal Kombat onto the Super Nintendo. And that was a big deal because it was like you punch somebody and like sweat like pops out. Right. Um, yeah. And yeah, in some cases they do. They do green as well. Well, in this case, uh, well, and actually on our next story, we should actually go and transition to that, too. This next one here, this is actually uh, China, uh, the Chinese version of PUBG. <laughs> Chinese, Chinese, the Chinese version of PUBG. Um, they use sparks. They use green sparks because the new law says that they can't even have blood looking fluids come off of coming off of players or whatever. So they have to add, they have to make it they have to make they made sparks. And so transitioning over here now to uh, PUBG, Tencent's Chinese PUBG dupe has enemies who wave at you after you shoot them. So what is this? What is this clone? Is this another clone? Well, this is actually kind of funny because. PUBG was basically pulled from China and then not PUBG a game called Game for Peace was released and approved in China. I'll show you a little clip of of uh, Game for Peace and I'm curious if you guys will see any similarities between this and uh, Player on Battlegrounds. So here's the uh, Oh, it's, it's a GIF, so apologies. It's going to zoom all the way in here, I guess. Um, so here's a GIF showing what happens when you kill a player in Game for Peace. He waves, he puts down his loot box, and that's it. Now, this is Game for Peace. This is not PUBG. This is not PUBG, okay? It's not. This is Game, this is game for Peace. It is a game that was, let's see, where is it at? Damn it. It was built from the ground up. It was built from scratch. Okay? It is not PUBG. It's called Game for Peace. They wave at you whenever you kill them. Uh, 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 uh. And that's it. And they disappear. Uh, <laughs> so this, this game, Game for Peace, uh, was approved for release in China in April. PUBG was still in the process of trying to get approved in China. Um, and I guess because Tencent has the distribution rights for both Game for Peace and for PUBG, they just went with um, Game for Peace instead. So it's inspired by. So there's so much inspired by this episode. Uh, yeah, it says other instances of obvious cleanup. The mimic is so precise that if, if Weibo users who reported playing the game are to be believed, players would frequently find themselves at the exact same level and with the, with a similar play history in Game of Peace as they did for uh, in PUBG. So, basically what this means is, 
is that the data, uh, your play data that um, that you may had or may have had in one game, uh, was copied over. So, huh. so it's, it's yeah. Tencent doing sketchy shit. No way. I know. No way. No way. You mean China took a functional product and made their own product for consumption? Yeah. Um, it's it's it. This is we've seen this before. Um, with just general clones. I mean, like. The copyright laws don't really, because of certain agreements that we have with certain countries, they kind of apply in other countries, but for the most part, they really, yeah, they really don't exist, especially in Asia, uh, especially in Asia, not, not just China, just like in general Asia, um, the Philippines, the same story, um, uh, Vietnam, same story, same story, Thailand, same story. Like, there's just, copyright is just not enforced the way that we enforce it here. Um, and so, you know, whatever, however they got, however they decided to do this, to me, here's what it looks like to me. It looks like Tencent was trying to get, they, they knew, they wanted to get PUBG release in China, but they knew that they would run into some, some flack when they went, you know, with the actual release because of how violent the game is. And so what they did was they made, they split, they, they probably split and they made another game, um, from scratch, uh, that, that followed all of the laws in China about censorship, right? Can't, you can't have bones, you can't have blood, you can't do all this stuff. They fork out of here, they fork, they fork the, the, uh, the GitHub. Um, and so they, they had this as a backup plan. It was like, all right, so we have this we really want PUBG to go but you know what if that doesn't work we have this other game that we know for a fact will pass and they did it it happened they did uh it got approved in april and so now they're able to um it says right here it's Tencent announced it was pulling back test version of PUBG to release to chinese gamers shortly thereafter it announced the release of a game for of game for peace Tencent says the game pays tribute to the blue sky warriors that guard our country's airspace aka the chinese air force so yeah yep so not PUBG available now in China, those of you folks who uh, are, you know, who are interested, who are watching from China, uh, considering the rest of the world it really enjoys violence, what's wrong with this? Doesn't affect us. Doesn't affect us. What do you mean? Game for peace. Oh man, it's gotta be weird living in that kind of environment. I think you would think. Um, boy, that's pretty much it. There's there's one more little thing. Uh, this one this one it does it. I don't think it really is like widespread impact. It's kind of caught me off guard. Uh, um, oh, uh, so isn't Twitch banned in China? I forget. I forget which ones are. I forget which ones are. Uh, so you guys know who DJ Weed is, right? I hope so. He hosts a couple shows for Twitch. He is like kind of the face of Twitch in a lot of situations. Uh, so DJ Weed is. Um, does he do music? <laughs> Listen, man, back in the day, people our age, we all, we all have DJ names. Mine is DJ Phony. Yes, that is true. His is DJ Wee. I was smart enough to drop the DJ a long time ago. He did not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, DJ Wee is, uh, uh, is still a DJ. Um, but yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, anyways, so, uh, DJ Weeks, I shall, I'll let him go and tell you himself. <laughs> it's starting to get figured out in, uh, in chat. So, yes, in order to maximize my ability to help creators on Twitch to travel and not put a heavy burden on my family, to put my son, Mini Wheat, back in public school after being homeschooled for three years. I am going to move back with the family to Nebraska. Still 100% Twitch. Maybe you didn't know, but like my first three years of Twitch, I actually lived in Nebraska. I worked remotely. I traveled out there a lot. I will still travel out there a lot. Um, and it's not going to change much other than me kind of taking back control of my own time and my own schedule. Uh, right. So <laughs> it's starting to get figured out. <laughs> uh, All right. So, so, 
Yes. You guys didn't know? I, I guess if you guys don't know DJ Wee, uh, then you probably don't know that his, yeah, his kid's name is, uh, it, he goes by Mini Wee. I think it's adorable, honestly. All right. So, uh, so DJ Wee is moving. No, this, this is more like I sympathize with, yeah, good for him. I sympathize with him as somebody who lives in the Bay Area. I don't, I live in the Bay Area. I don't live in San Francisco. San Francisco is worse, right? Like a mini beat. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Um, there's a number of folks who are basically checking out of the Bay Area, right? Where they're trying, they're based, they're, they're done. They're done with, especially San Francisco. They're done with living, excuse me, they're done with in San Francisco where they have, it's kind of weird having him up there like talking and he's not actually talking. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, it, there's, first off, there's like the lottery system to get your people into, uh, into schools, to get your kids into schools. Um, he he's he's sending his kid or he has his kids uh is uh is homeschooled and who knows what his wife does uh and just the cost of living like i feel like there's i don't feel like raising a kid in uh in san francisco is is a is a good idea now again i don't i don't live in san francisco proper um but i believe that that we does or did at least um and so yeah he's going to be moving uh, if you watch, if you watch any of his shows, they, they do, they do have, uh, the weekly shows that they do. Um, that's being put on hold for now and he's going back to Nebraska. So I just wanted to mention because I thought, I thought you guys would be more aware of DJ Wee. Like I, I consider him a, an acquaint, a bit, I guess an industry acquaintance, acquaintance, uh, uh, for some, some years now. And so I thought it was kind of a shocker. Like he's going to, he's going to move back. He's going to be, uh, more present. If you watch any of JP stuff, you're going to see a lot more DJ Wee. Uh, he's going to do a lot more, get more involved with the role playing stuff there. So if you watched, if you watched a lot of, um, uh, shows back in the day, like probably six years ago or so that featured Wee, and now he doesn't, he doesn't do that anymore because uh, he didn't basically didn't have any time to do it while he's working full time at, uh, or working whatever positions he had at, um, at Twitch. Well, now you'll be able to get more of him. So if there's any DJ Wee fans out there, you guys are in luck. DJ Wee trailblazing for opening the door to more remote jobs at Twitch. I know. I know. Yeah. That's a big deal. Like, that's, it's going to happen. And this is like my whole, my whole local rant. They keep building all these high density homes for all these people that are coming here to work jobs that are not going to exist in like 10 years. And then all these people are going to be like not be able to afford their $5,000 a month mortgage. Yes, because these condos all cost a million dollars each. I'm not going to get on this. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get on this soapbox, damn it, because it's not related to anything we're talking about today, but let, uh. anyways, one of these days you guys will see me at a council meeting. I'm going to be mad yelling at some, some representatives of the city. <laughs> Just be like, you guys are fucking up. You're fucking up. Anyways, that's it. That's it for news today, guys. Um, my house only costs a hundred thousand dollars. Oh man. I, you can't buy shit for a hundred thousand dollars out here. I envy you. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so uh, SF is going to be the most barren city in the U.S. Probably, housing prices will drop. Homeless is already out of control. There's shit all over the sidewalks in certain areas of town. I can confirm this. I've seen it myself. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So, my name is Mike B. You can find me at AK Mike B on Twitter, on Facebook. No, fuck that. No, fuck Facebook. Uh, on YouTube, on Twitch. And this is Uncle Chat. You can find Uncle Chat on Twitch as well. Cliff just keeps on pumping out poops. God, you gotta take some pills for that, man. Take some pills. Some lactate. Oh god, more poops. We don't need we don't need a bunch of fucking poops, guys. Alright. You guys are dicks. Alright, so that's it. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>